Hello. Hello. What's popping out there, peeps? <laughs> Hopefully more than what's popping in here. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. For sure. So, yeah, I it's been uh, wonky out in the world, and um, I do not wish to participate in any of it. So, winter is normally the time that I hibernate, and I am so down <laughs> to make that happen again this year. <laughs> I still like getting out and about, but just the whole change in in the weather definitely has me slowing down a little bit. Yesterday was crazy here with the wind. It was like a tornado, but was, straight line winds. Yeah. 50 mile an hour, I think they said something to that effect. Yeah. It was crazy. They got 70 mile an hour winds up in Cleveland. Wow. Yeah. I think they said it set a record, you know, Strongest winds since, you know, 19 aught something. I, <laughs> <laughs> I forget what they said. Um, you know me, my mouth started moving before my brain fully engaged. And the winds were not just me talking. No. Just <laughs> <laughs> I had nothing to do with it. But uh, I was glad that I didn't have to be outside during that time. I was thinking about going somewhere and then it started and I'm like, yeah, I think I'm going to stay inside my house for a little bit. Well, it rained off and on during the wind and the granddaughter literally sat at the front door watching the, um, the rain. And so she let me know when it stopped. And well, at one point I had to run outside because one of our, um, decorative planters was blowing down the street and um so i had to go back and i had to go get it but then when it slowed up a little bit and the rain stopped we put on our play clothes and we went out back and played in the backyard for a little while until i talked her in but they got it started raining again so we came back in <laughs> <laughs> it started spitting and i'm like i think it's about to rain just a couple more minutes and her whole thing is two more minutes so i said okay two more minutes and um then it's so I felt it sprinkling, and then I think it stopped. But I already had her convinced it was raining, so I showed her all the sprinkles on the slide. <laughs> <laughs> and and we, we uh, went inside before she realized it stopped. No one tell on Grammy. <laughs> she hasn't figured that trick out yet, but yeah, it was cold out there. Yeah. I actually turned on my furnace. That happened. Mine's been on, but I turn it down to like 62. So just when it gets like, <laughs> then it automatically <laughs> kicks on. But then I can still open the windows if it's warm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I am one of those late people. I can tolerate the cold, but I had my grandson this weekend and he already had a cold. So that was probably no good to freeze him out at, at Gigi's house yes. this weekend. No. <laughs> But we went to see goats this weekend, which is pretty awesome. Anytime there's goats, it's pretty awesome. Yep. I'm <laughs> not sure which one of you likes goats more. Uh, the goats responded to him much more than me, but um, he had pockets full of sunflower seeds. So <laughs> there was that. <laughs> that might have something to do with it. So they, they were all about him. But once he was out, um, the older one, its name was Banjo, it was a little standoffish because he wanted to, like, run around. And there, be there came a point where he was running in circles, not intending to chase, but the goat felt chased. And so then it kind of hid for a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it's a 10-year-old goat. And it was just like, yeah, I, I think I'm done with this kid now. <laughs> Unless there are more sunflower seeds. <laughs> Empty your pockets, back away. <laughs> but that was fun. Um, so, yeah, what a, what a great weekend for green kids. So yep. we just have to find more things to do inside with them. Yes. My oldest one is getting a little, little better with going places and doing things. And so I think we are ready to start stepping up our adventures and maybe find some indoor things. I tend to do a lot more outside stuff because she is a little loud when she doesn't get her way. And that's a little more tolerable when you're outside. <laughs> <laughs> that's 
what kids do. Yep. That's it. So uh, I hope you all of our listeners had wonderful weekends and um, are staying safe out there because it's wonky not knowing what's happening. And I, I feel, I feel personally like having a Thanksgiving to myself and possibly my bed watching Netflix sounds pretty awesome, but I could do that all winter long and thrive. It's kind of like a reset for me. But I know a lot of people really depend on, not depend, maybe that's the wrong word, but get amplified with having a lot of people around and being out and social. That's not me, but um, I get that it could be a real bummer this year. I don't have a large group for Thanksgiving most often, just uh, my close family. But I'm thinking I'm I'm toning that down um, this year as well, not because of, because of COVID, because sometimes my family pisses me off, and uh, they're reminding me of that this weekend. So, um, but I need to have a Thanksgiving because I need to cook all of the Thanksgiving foods, <laughs> and I need more people <laughs> so that I have an excuse to cook all of the holiday, all of the Thanksgiving foods. So you, it's my favorite. So you cook and you just, you invite them over in five min, minute increments to get their plate and get out. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. A ticket and go. <laughs> Thanksgiving. We can do that. Open up the back window and it could be like a drive or a walk through. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> Tell me what you want on your plate. <laughs> they don't even have to come in. <laughs> Well, we already, because um, because we are a smaller family, we've always been the side that we wait for, you know, the kids, significant others, families to make their plans. And then, you know, with as small as we are, we can wiggle it all around. And we're all close, um, in close proximity to each other. So it's not like we have three-hour drive times or anything like that. Literally 30 minutes is the farthest any of us live. And so it already kind of happens in shifts where usually my son and daughter-in-law come over for the first half and then they leave and then, you know, we kind of continue on. They have dessert elsewhere, but they eat the, my son, turkey and mashed potatoes. That's all he eats um, (laughs) at my house. But I don't even know that I'll go that far this year. I think I might maybe just my parents and the oldest grand princess and maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. I still need more people, though, because I, I I have to have more than just the two of us because she won't eat all of the foods that I need. Well, you could freeze it. No. <laughs> I don't even have enough room in my freezer for anything right now. <laughs> anything. I have one of those weird side-by-sides. I mm. hate a side-by-side. Um, I dislike a side-by-side. I am thankful to have somewhere to store my food. Um, <laughs> but I don't like it. Because, you know, it's hard to maneuver things in there. I don't know what's in there now because I have to, it's like Jenga. (laughs) You know, you pull one thing out and I play the game where I have to jump back a lot because, you know, a roll of sausage will come out and, you know, try to smash your foot or whatever. But yeah, I have no room in there for anything right now. Literally no room. I see this problem. (laughs) Yes. Um... I'm sure there's stuff I could get rid of in there, but I can't find it because I'd have to move other stuff. Mm. That's been on my to-do list for a while. Yeah, you don't have a lot of time. I know that. No. But um, two of my nights, um, I think, are freeing up. Um, I was doing some babysitting of the youngest grandchild two days a week, and I don't have to do that anymore. So okay. I'll still see her, but um, I don't have to babysit. So maybe, maybe some more time. I doubt that I'll clean my freezer, though. Let's be realistic. (laughs) It's not in your face annoying you until you open it up and go, God damn it, it's still here. Yeah, it usually doesn't annoy my face. It's my feet as stuff falls out because I'm always barefoot when I'm inside the house. But, you know, I mean, you can freeze it, but it's just never the same. Mm -hmm. And the house doesn't smell like turkey and all the goodness. Yeah. I... I understand that, but uh, Kroger, you can go get a chicken breast, a rotis not a chicken no. breast, a turkey breast, a rotisserie t- turkey breast. Uh, sweet potatoes is like my jam. 
So I will make that. And uh, mashed potatoes. I could have a freaking roll this year, Barbara. I can eat a roll. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> now, you know what's funny is that is the one thing. You know how much I love bread. <laughs> Thanksgiving is the one day that I don't eat a lot of bread. <laughs> I will have rolls there because, you know, you have to have rolls and butter. But rarely do I have more than one. I mean, I guess there's stuffing, so I'm getting other bread. <laughs> um, but, yeah, because there's just too much other stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm getting hungry. I even, <laughs> I even ate today before we did this. So last week... Uh, Last week, my life coach self talked to my fat self (laughs) and said, Rose, you are doing well for so long and this whole like losing weight thing. And then you lost it. And I lost it like big time. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Like life has just been too difficult for me with a whole lot of stuff. So I'm like, we're going to, I had a restart with some other stuff anyway. And I'm like, I'm really going to dedicate myself. And every morning I have, I, I'm getting up an hour earlier and I'm going to be doing the, these things for myself and dedicate myself to my wellness and feeling good about myself again. So one of the things that I decided to do is find a meal program and uh, Clean Eats has like the best deal like they are the least expensive and it's very near my house. So I can either get it shipped or I can go pick it up. So for five meals, and I just wanted to test it out, it was 40 bucks, which seems really expensive. But other than that, I eat baked potatoes because I am all about a baked potato. (laughs) (laughs) And I had the first one for lunch today and I am still full. It was so good. It was only, it was hibachi um, beef with sweet and sour sauce and uh, zucchini. And it was so freaking good. And uh, I can do this. I can do this. And it's much less cooking on my part. And why not? So that's what I am doing. Well, good for you. Yeah. I know what I need to do, and I'm still not doing it. (laughs) Yeah, so I am, I'm coaching myself through this. And, of course, I have other people that help me out as well and give me the kick in the pants when I need it. But we've been focusing on other things recently. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Just living. (laughs) during the stress. And uh, yeah, so um, if you can take some downtime to rededicate yourself to yourself and your goals instead of focusing on the stress, I invite everyone to do that because it feels really good to give a gift to yourself. Speaking of gifts, how has our Bright Side bonus challenge been going? Did you hear anything back from anybody? No! Okay. No, I'm kind of bummed about it. Really bummed about it. So I don't know. So I've been, again, watching a whole bunch of TikTok. And you really have to post a lot to get on the For You page for people to see it. So until we can get a lot of content that I can just put out during the week, chances are really slim that anybody is going to see anything that we put out. So gotcha. That could fill up your two free evenings as well. (laughs) We can do dumb shit on TikTok. (laughs) Pardon me. I do dumb shit all the time. We just you just need to video it. Right. I was called a child today. Speaking of, not in a bad way. Um, someone was asking me how my day was going. And I told them something to the effect of, you know, I got uh, got behind and now I'm trying to play catch up. And they asked if I saw a squirrel. And I said, no, but a three-year-old child came to my office today. And you know how fun those spinny office chairs are. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, you 
you're a child. And I agreed. <laughs> but, you know, it's the simple things. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing work while playing with their child. It's community relations. That's right. Duh. It is one of my one of our tenants who is actually a tenant for the second time because they came back. And, oh, guess what? They want a bigger apartment. And instead of moving, they want to move with us. So why is that? Could be something as simple as me spinning their daughter in a chair. I think that's awesome. I do, too. So in other gift news, I was researching things to get people um, for the holidays as we are separated. And some of them are really cool and have, like... um purposes. But I want to start with people whose birthdays might be in December and get lost <laughs> in the um the holiday shuffle as people are afraid to travel and and such. So, I have a Thanksgiving and a Christmas time birthday. Mm. So, go ahead. <laughs> I, I know I always have to make a special you know we have a birthday cake at Thanksgiving <laughs> at my house um, for the second Thanksgiving birthday person we have. Um, but please continue. This company is called Send a Cake, and it's kind of pricey, but also a really cool idea as you're missing birthdays, and especially in December birthdays, as I can attest to, it, ber December birthdays just get lost in the muck of right. holidays. And it's so unfair. <laughs> you should have half birthdays. Start celebrating half birthdays. Hmm. I should just celebrate myself every day. That's what well, I think. There you go. Can we have cookies at <laughs> your birthday party? Because we can do that every day. Well, I'm avoiding the cookies right now. Thank you. Okay, fine. I forgot. Okay. Zucchini for your birthday. Yeah, zucchini. <laughs> All right. So we're not doing the send a cake to you then. Not the send a cake to me. Uh, well, may, you know, I could have a cheat day maybe in December 27th, but whatever. <laughs> but so this idea, it's a little bunt cake or you can get a full size cake. Those I didn't even look at the price of those because the small bunt cake after, like before all of the add-ons, it's between 50 and 60 bucks. So the cake itself um, could range from $24.95 to $44 just for the cake. But the cake comes in a box. So when I was like doing the options to see all that was there, there was like this hollow foil sort of uh, woo-woo sort of symbolic box that spoke to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of those. And that was like a $5 add-on, but it was really shiny and pretty and had moons on it. So that was. <laughs> Look, I paid 50 cents just to be able to put cookies in a box just to keep myself out of them. So sometimes it's the box is worth it. So then there are a lot of add-ons that you can make to um, customize it. So for three fifty each, you can add a picture that they'll put on a card. And all four sides, when you open it, kind of fall down. So you can have, you know, four pictures on those cards as it opens up. Um, you can have paper butterflies that fly out. That's a $10 add-on. A music chip. That's a $10 add-on that'll play a song when you open it up. Um for $10, you can have candies fall out, and that looks like Halloween candy. They probably raided all of the stores at Halloween <laughs> time if they were a smart company. I'm sure they are. Um, uh, little tiny uh, stuffed animals fall out. For Christmas, there's one that has these little, like, presents that are chocolate. Hmm. Um, it's super cute, and it's a really adorable idea. It is kind of pricey, but... It really would mean a lot, probably, to somebody who, you know, is used to celebrating their birthday and can't, and you can right. send them something. Um, so I really like that idea. They did not list any charitable um, givebacks on their website. They may do it, but they didn't list it. But the rest of the ideas that I have um are really great companies who give back in different ways. So uh, Grayston 
G-R-E-Y-S-T-O-N dot org. Uh, this company makes brownies, and they make the brownies that are in the Ben and Jerry's ice creams. And I have they... never had it. Really? I have had one Ben and Jerry's ever in my life, and it was okay. And I didn't feel the need to pay the expense to try anymore. Hmm. I don't even know which one I tried because I was like, yeah, okay, it was ice cream. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> ben and Jerry's does not get money from me. Okay. And well, I'm never going to buy an ice cream with a brownie in it on purpose. Really? Yeah. What's the reservation? I don't want a frozen brownie. It's just <laughs> not my thing. It's not my thing. Okay. Well, you can order just brownies from this company, too. It's like $35 uh, for a dozen. I'll let them try to entice us to give more of their information by sending us brownies, maybe. So I'll just keep interrupting you while you talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the information that I have is pretty cool because... <laughs> They hire people who usually get rejected. So some of the people might be, you know, ex-convicts, people who had to seek asylum in the country, um, whatever. So people who usually get turned away or rejected. So they're directly from their website. They say, when people say they want to work, we give them a chance. No questions asked, no resumes, no interviews, no background checks. By replacing scrutiny with trust, we transform the lives of communities, breaking the cycle of poverty. And I just think that's pretty powerful. Everybody does deserve a, a second chance. And there is a risk involved there, for sure. Um, but it seems like it's working well for them. How long have they been around? Did you happen to look at that? Uh, uh, it seemed like quite a while. Okay. Yeah. It, it. Yeah. It didn't seem like it was anything new whatsoever. And um, and when you give somebody a chance, that it, it it looked like their employees were there for quite a long time. Mm. So, you know, somebody believed in them, and that makes it all the difference in the world. That somebody gave them the opportunity and right believed in them and gave them a boost. I get that. Well, that's cool. That is cool. Uh, item number three is something I am definitely going to buy. Uh, lucky iron fish. I have had an ongoing problem with anemia. And I spend a butt ton of money on supplements every month. And the iron pills usually upset my stomach. So then I got these beet pills. And they work, but... I don't like to really take pills, and I forget. And I'm horrible about taking my iron pills as well. Yeah. I've been borderline anemic for at least 30 years. Yeah. So for you, they have the leaf, not just a fish. They do have a leaf pattern. Because <laughs> you know I only want a catfish. <laughs> so it is this little metal fish that you... Um, can cook in your stew or your spaghetti sauce. It does need some sort of acidic hit in it. So lemon juice or tomatoes, vinegar, something like that. And it has to uh, cook for at least 10 minutes. But it puts the iron back in your diet. And it's only 40 bucks. And they give back to all kinds of people. They say last year 40,000 lives were impacted. And they... Like, on their website, they are totally transparent about who they give to and what programs. And every year, it's something different. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would be honestly concerned, though, about either dumping it down the drain and breaking my garbage disposal or, I mean, not putting it in my mouth. I'm sure I could figure it out on the spoon, but. Yeah, it's pretty uh, good size. Okay. I mean, okay. you just got to remember to take it out. Like, set a timer for 10 minutes. And go take it out. <laughs> Hello, my name is Barbara. Have you met me before? I forget where I'm going while I'm in the process of walking there. <laughs> oh, look, I set a timer. I wonder what that's for. <laughs> I never thought of 
having a solution like this to solve iron. Like, how do you get iron in your diet? You take a supplement or you cook something in your food. I mean, the food itself for me has not been enough to replace that in my diet or whatever I chose to eat wasn't. So supplements don't work for me either. So, so definitely I am going to give this a shot. And I love that my money is going to go to a lot of charities. So that makes me happy. Absolutely. <clears throat> Absolutely. So this one, I thought of you. Oh, do tell. Coffee. Mm. <laughs> and firefighters. Uh, I'm more interested in the coffee part of that. <laughs> I am, more, like I said, borderline anemic, which usually makes you tired. And so doctors would always ask me, you know, like, don't you feel run down? And I'm like, no. Well, I have hyperactivity and lots of coffee. So that's <laughs> So you wouldn't know even if I was uh, being sluggish because I'm still usually way more wired than other people. But please tell me about coffee. Okay, so. And will a firefighter bring it to me? Maybe. Maybe we can arrange that. We, I think we're going to link all of the people and I'll send out to these companies that we talked about them. So maybe they will hear your request. <laughs> Just so you know, not a new recruit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someone farther up the ladder. <laughs> Single, white hair. We live in we live in Columbus, Ohio. He <laughs> doesn't have to have white hair. I am also single. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this coffee, this company is totally run by current and former firefighters. And they have a wide variety of coffee, um, some regular and some special blends like rum-infused coffee and tequila-infused coffee and stuff like that. So the rum-infused coffee, it's sixteen ninety nine for 12 ounces, which, you know, it's a little pricey, but for something special like that, who and a portion of what they get goes back to... Um, Firefighters or first responders who were injured on the job, either mentally or physically, or facing some sort of health challenges. So I am willing to pay more for things to give back like that. Oh, yeah. I mean, because how much are you going to pay for this one of the Seattle brand coffees if you buy it, you know, yeah. by the bag? I don't know because I don't use that brand either. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, people pay lots of money for coffee. Um, so Absolutely. So I am excited about this. I think that I will definitely order some. But if you were, if you have a coffee lover, you can, you know, maybe gift them a subscription for a year. There is a subscription option on there or get a bunch of different kinds and give them coffee. And you're giving to two people. Well, you're giving to the gift recipient and you're giving to the people who um, receive the help. Yeah. So that's cool. Think about that in your gift giving shopping. So then the last one, I think that as we are getting older and we go to these festival concerts and want to preserve our hearing, we might want to think about. So <laughs> it's called Discover Vibes and V-I-B-E-S. Okay. Vibrations. Um, and they are earplugs with like little... Um, canals in them or tubes so that the sound is not just dampened so that it's unclear or muddy. You can hear everything and it only diminishes the decibel levels. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So they say that the average concert is between 89 to 110 decibels and hearing loss or damage could happen at 85 decibels. And it's really a short amount of time that that um, hearing damage could happen. We are well beyond that. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, I think, you know, as many concerts as we go to and for as long as we've been going to them, I've always preferred the outdoor shows mm -hmm. and I don't like being right up on the um, up against the stage where you hear, 
you know, all the reverberation off all the equipment and stuff like that. So I've always kind of stayed back, not for my hearing standpoint, but for a listening standpoint. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I like to hear kind of everything. And if it's too loud, I can't hear everything. I think I've always protected my ears in that way already. Mm -hmm. Um, But when I was doing concert vending, I always carried um, earplugs, you know, so, but they do mess with the sound. So that's cool that it would leave it nice and clear as well. Mm -hmm. These are supposed to reduce the decibel hit to you by 22 increments. I don't know. Decibel points. I don't know what they're called. <laughs> decibel know. levels. I guess just decibels. Uh, <laughs> knock it down 22 decibels. So it's not only good just for concerts, but people who are working in those arenas, like, you know, selling merchandise mm-hmm. or bartending or whatever, because especially those bars get really crowded and it doesn't even have to be live music. Maybe the jukebox is just ridiculous. I know that I've been out places where I couldn't hear the person next to me oh, talking. Yeah. yeah. So people who work in airports, there's all, there's loud noise everywhere. So yeah, that sounds really cool. Yeah, they are only twenty three ninety nine. dollars Like, what a cheap investment to save your hearing. And a good portion of their sales go to help get people um, hearing aids who can't afford it and um, funding education to those in need in other countries about hearing loss. Oh, that's good. Hearing aids, if you've never priced them, they are expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I didn't realize how expensive they were until um, my mom has hearing aids. She does not wear them all the time. Um, She should, but she does not. (laughs) And every once in a while, the cat gets a hold of them because he likes to play with it. And then I hear about, oh, my God, that was that much money and the cat took it. (laughs) So I know they're not cheap. (laughs) And, you know, my mom is a frugal person, so it's not like she's out buying the Cadillac of uh, hearing aids. Um, Mm -hmm. So that's great that there's someone out there that can offer some help. Yeah. I I tried to find things, like I said, that was definitely a give back and not out of the range. So, you know, Oprah has her favorite things and God bless Oprah. But, you know, $175 shirt like that just Oprah can afford that. Right. (laughs) (laughs) I would rather buy lots of people shirts. Yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think those are great, great ideas that aren't too expensive and that help others. So it's a win, win, win. It is. Um, a lot of things that I have shopped for, I really like not the normal sort of things when I am gift giving. I really like to think about the person and what they like. And so Uncommon Goods is a website that I do a lot of shopping on. And there are some things on there that is really pricey. And one thing that I do is I find something on Uncommon Goods and I get what it's called. And I either then like find who made it or find something similar and get it much cheaper. Sorry, Uncommon Goods for steal, for putting your, <laughs> your stuff out there. But that's what I do because some of it is just like, whoa, For sure, they need paid, too, because there's a catalog, there's advertising that they're doing and everything. But there was a Constellation necklace that looked pretty cool, and it was like $180. And there was a woman on Etsy who made it for like $40. Oh, wow. And I liked the lady on Etsy who was supporting her family. Right. You know, like, that's cool, too. So there's your other plug. So check out Etsy. (laughs) (laughs) I shop a lot on Etsy uh, for Christmas, for sure. I really like supporting an individual. Right. That is always nice when you know that you're not just putting it in some corporate, you know, bank account. So the um, Bath and Body Works scent that I liked, the Vanilla Rose stuff. At the beginning of the pandemic, uh, Bath and Body Works, the store was closed. And I'm like, so I think that I'm just going to go on Etsy And I'll see who has, you know, a vanilla rose hybrid combination and try that out. And it worked for one. I bought a lotion on one, a body scrub on another, and a body wash on a third. 
just because I wanted like three different scent options. Gotcha. And only the lady who sold the body wash was like in any hurry or had any correspondence or anything to say when I ordered. And I even said you know, when I ordered, thank you so much. This must be a stressful time. Mm-hmm. It's important for me to support an individual rather than go to Bath and Body Works. So I put it out there at the beginning. Oh, okay. Two of them were just had nothing to say. And the lotion was like severely disappointing. It was like uh, the Vaseline lotion with uh, oil in it. Like oh. that's it. I can do that. Right. (laughs) So I was a little, eh, but it's, you know, hit or miss. You find who's good and who's not and process of elimination. It's all good. Um, But the lady who gave, who I got the body wash from sent me a whole bunch of extras. So I got this lip scrub for free and on, I was going to buy it actually, I saw it on there and I thought it was a little tiny 10. It It's like a three inch diameter 10. Oh, like, wow. This is lip scrub for five years. <laughs> like my lips are not that big. <laughs> I'm editing myself. Thank you. <laughs> Have you purchased from her since? Have you run out of anything yet? Um... I am going to be placing an order, but I did, you know, I was sure to leave her positive feedback, but she is not selling the vanilla rose anymore. So maybe she will if I ask her, I don't know, but that particular scent is not on there anymore. Hmm. I'm sure maybe she'll do it special for you. If we give her a shout out to (laughs) all of our listeners. Etsy is really great. I, the artist that we saw in um, Ann Arbor, I wish that I remembered her name, but uh, was it Ann Arbor? Someplace in Michigan. Um, we went to the art store in Marshall, Michigan. Okay, and Marshall. I did order some more prints from her, and I have those in my living room. Those are amazing. Um, she's an amazing artist. Um, and they were not too expensive either. They were more expensive in the art store. Oh, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. That was a very fancy looking store. I'm sure they paid lots in rent for that store. Yeah. It was a lot of space. And not a lot of customers at that particular point. The pandemic is really like... Right. Mm-hmm. I too was looking for shopping options and gift options. And I do have some on my list and I apologize for not being prepared for today. <laughs> um, we'll just have a part two. <laughs> we'll have a part two. And uh, I had reached out um, to one of the ones that I wanted to talk about. And I am waiting to hear back and we'll see if I hear back. And Okay. So. They'll just got, be a part two. Yeah, that'll be a part two. So what do you think about, how is your shopping going to change this year? What do you feel that you will do differently this year? Um, I will buy for less people this year. I will probably do... Go back to um, my goodie trays and baking things for people, um, which I do, I mean, anyway. But um, I'm not the hugest gift giver because I'm not a huge fan of receiving. So um, unless I find something that I know they really like, then I just don't. We spend time together. We do things. Um, I am the type of person who would rather not get a gift than get something to just sit on my shelf that I have to guilt keep um, (laughs) for the next five years. I understand that. Um, So please don't guilt keep anything that I have given you (laughs) that happens to be in your living room. It's okay. (laughs) I have things that I don't like either, and I know exactly what you're talking about. And I'm like, oh, that person's coming over. Let me go find out where I put that thing. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> no, the stuff I guilt keep, usually I just keep it. It's not out on display or anything. I just still have it. Um, yeah. Um, you know, I, I tell people all the time, really, no, I'm good. Or I'm that person that I'm like, I want this. And it's never expensive. It's very specific. And 
but because I don't need a lot, and I definitely don't need extra stuff. You're very low maintenance. I am so low maintenance. <laughs> so low maintenance. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, the pandemic probably isn't changing what I do a lot. Hmm. I may look more online, but I'm not an online shopper either, which is why I'm preparing for this segment. Did not go well as well. <laughs> I love shopping online, but also there are some things like clothes and stuff like that is so hard. Clothes and shoes, like I want to feel it. I don't want anything that's going to be scratchy or uncomfortable or fit weird. And then to send it back is a pain. Now, last year on Black Friday, I spent, I went to work on Black Friday and went shopping online. And 90% of what I purchased is literally still sitting in a bag, didn't get returned, didn't get given, was just a waste of money. Mm. So I did buy clothing, which I almost never do online. And of course it did not fit. I will find someone later that's the right size to give it to, but I didn't bother returning it. So yeah, it ends up being a a waste of money and time because it takes me longer to find stuff online than it would to just walk in a store. So for me, I don't like it. So sorry, I'm going to put my mask on and I'm going shopping. (laughs) The stores will love you. (laughs) But I shop all year. As I find stuff, I just buy it. I'm Mm -hmm. one of those with a gift closet. A gift closet. I have a gift closet. I block it so the grandkids can't get to it. (laughs) Do you remember what's in there when it comes to Halloween time? (laughs) Halloween time. Why did I say Halloween time? Holiday time. (laughs) Um, well, I go through there from time to time and literally I'll take stuff out and go through it. Um, my oldest granddaughter, I buy for her continually and I just throw stuff in the closet. And then when it's birthday, Christmas, um, you know, Easter, then her and her mom will go and I, her mom and I will go through it and decide, okay, I can this wait until the next holiday or should I give that to her now? And it backfired on me this year because she skipped a size altogether. And so I had a whole bunch of clothes that I was going to give to her that is now waiting for the next grandchild. <laughs> you got a backup now. <laughs> yeah, um, I got a backup. Um, but, you know, I have a blue, my um, Cookie Monster fur coat. I have a blue furry coat. Um, I bought a pink one, a hot pink one for... The oldest princess and she didn't even get to wear it mm. we tried it on and nope oh bummer yeah i was so bummed so you know in a couple years the next one has one um yeah so it backfires on me sometimes but you know i don't buy stuff that's necessarily seasonal or has a date on it so um and my son collects nutcrackers and he has since he was young and those are hard to find different ones. You know, they're always the same over and over and over. So I buy those whenever I find them. And then, um, so I'll pull those all out and say, you know, oh, well, this is going on this year. So I'll give them this one or, hey, I've made a collection out of this. So sometimes it might be five years before he gets a specific one and other ones I might buy and give to him immediately. So it just kind of depends. So I just buy all the time. If I see something that I think somebody will like, I buy it. I see. I bought you a present several years ago, and I still haven't figured out where I put it. (laughs) It's still lost, I think, in my house. (laughs) I don't know where it is. I take mental notes in my head, or sometimes I think, this will be a great idea. I will have somebody make this, or, and then when I get it, it's like, Not so great. Um, It's a good idea in my head. And then the finished product is not so great. But um, I try to pay attention to the individual. I don't want to give gifts that don't make sense to that person just to give a gift. Right. Because they say it's the thought that counts, but not always. You actually have to put thought into it to make the thought count. Yeah, I don't want just th- random things. Right. If the person doesn't know me, like, give me a gift card. Let me let me do my own. <laughs> so there's, there's this time of year, people talk about Secret Santas, and um, there's a couple different groups that I belong to that are starting up a Secret Santa. And 
every year I debate on whether I want to do it or not. Um, and then this year, someone was talking about doing the kind, and I, I don't have all the details, but it's one of those kind of like where you send one gift and you can get, you get more than you give. Um, which just means that I will buy a present for one person I don't know, and then six to 16 people that don't know me are going to send me stuff too. And then I just got to thinking that just seems like a whole lot of wasted stuff. Mm -hmm. So I will probably not participate just because of that, because I don't want extra stuff. Yeah, I don't want extra stuff either. That doesn't sound cool. I've only participated in one Secret Santa of people. I, I knew one person in it. And I gave, like, the people, I think I did it three years. Um, the people who were on my list, I would go to their Facebook page, find out what they what they like, what they're about. And I think that they appreciated that. Right. The first two, like, people gave me, like, totally random stuff that had nothing to do with me. And then the last year, the person didn't even send whatever they were supposed to send. So mm -hmm. it was just, like, it was nice for me to give and for the people to appreciate but it was difficult for the person that I did know who was trying to coordinate all of this to make sure people sent their shit out on time and had everybody's addresses. And I don't want to put anybody through that. So she was right. like, I am done with that. I am not doing this anymore. And if you don't want to give a gift, don't sign up for those things. Don't leave the one person out who is like trying to wrangle and herd cats and <laughs> be crazy at the holiday time, you know? Well, what's funny is I like giving gifts. It's the receiving that I don't want the, the part. <laughs> That's the receiving <laughs> part that I don't want to be a part of. I'll buy people gifts, but I don't need them. So look at you all independent. Yeah. <laughs> That's me. That's you. That's okay. <laughs> what are the bright sides? There are so many companies out there with great things that they are giving through their companies. And I have a feeling that a lot of these started the company with the idea to give as they sell, which is really awesome. Well, and I'm guessing that a lot of these might have had a, had a need to begin with. You know, a lot of times these things hit close to home, like I, I'm guessing here, but maybe the, you know, the folks with the... The earplugs, you know, someone in their family had a hearing issue and then so they made earplugs and then, then they wanted to help. Mm -hmm. um, I do not know if that's the case, but I would imagine that, you know, a lot of these kind of companies follow that kind of pattern where they needed something that wasn't out there. So then they created it for themselves and, you know, then helping the others behind them. So yeah, that's awesome. It is awesome. And I think a bright side is doing the holidays however you want to do the holidays and not being pressured this year to do something that maybe you never had a fun time with before anyway. Yep. Yeah. I think so. Do your own thing your own way for yourself. I think that's my plan this year. We'll see if the family goes along with my plan. I'm going with my plan. I'm staying at home. And there's a couple of friends that I have that feel like that is the absolute saddest thing possible. Why are you going to spend Thanksgiving alone? Because I need to for my own sanity. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> I don't like being alone. I love being alone. It doesn't bother me to be alone, but I'm never, I'm rarely alone. Might as well cook for them while they're over there. <laughs> they kind of expect it. They do. <laughs> they do. But that's all right. I like to cook for people. I only eat when I'm, I only cook for other people. I rarely cook for myself. So I eat better when I have people around. <laughs> <laughs> what are other bright sides for this week? I got none. You got none. Nope. It is kind of a bummer out there. Yep. But there is bright sides to everything, even in the bummer. Yep. There is. <laughs> So all we can do is laugh through this because we don't know when it's ending. We don't know what's next. And all we have is just right now. So just be right now and whatever that is. Be as awesome as you can right now while you're doing it. Yeah. So if you guys have any 
awesome charitable places that have great gift ideas, let us know at hello at brightsideofcrazy.com. If you would like to be a guest and tell us what you got cooking, let us know. That would be so awesome. That would be awesome. So until next week, bye. Bye.